Hey guys, Bonanger here, and we're back with more Trials of Mana. Now, last time I said I would tell you guys which items I specifically wanted, which means I'm going to tell you which classes I'm going for, finally. And you can see them over there on the right. We've got, for Kevin, the Silver Aura, which... I'm just not going to say the class names for now because uh not sure what the new translation of them is. But for Kevin, we got the Silver Aura. For Hawkeye, we got the Dusk Dice. And for Angela, we got the Omen Book. So we are set. I really didn't have any trouble at all getting the rest of the items. It took him probably less than five minutes once I figured out what to do. But, um, anyway, we can't actually class change until level 38, and uh, we're not going to be level 38 at the end of this episode. So, I actually might end up doing some grinding in between this episode and the next one, because we are still very far below the level of the monsters we're fighting now. Anyway, there's only two Benevidons left. One of them is... Dark Benevidon, which we don't know where the Dark Mana Stone is, quote unquote, but I mean, I'm just saying. It seems just a little obvious, right? Right? Mm, maybe not. Anyway, that only leaves one accessible Benevidon, and that is Dangard. The Benevidon of wind. The sylph element. Or sylphid. They have changed the names of things in the mana series so much that I have trouble keeping it all straight. So anyway, this mana stone we actually went to first, I, if I remember correctly. And it is located in the uh, Corridor of Wind, or I think that's what it's called. Uh, our cat friends do not have any new items for us. Uh, don't be fooled by these weak enemies up front here. Uh, that is definitely going to end very quickly here. The Gust Hall, that's what it's called. And yeah, we do have to solve the puzzles again, but uh, at least at this time we already know there's actually nothing worth... Um, exploring for. Uh, these Copper Knights are deadly. You want to kill them as quick as you can. The uh, the Harpies and the Imps are not really anything to worry about. But yeah, kill those Knights fast. They have a spin attack like Kevin's and oof, it is deadly. It does so much damage to the whole party. Um, I frequently find myself having Hawkeye get knocked out by it just in one go. It does like high 300s in the damage, so I mean you'll survive it if you're at full health, but come on, how often are we actually at full health in this game? It's just so easy to take damage. But we've been here before, there's not a whole lot to talk about, there's only these three new enemies. It's a very short dungeon. This is actually like the quickest Benevidon to actually reach. Oop, we got a Copper Knight there. Kill him! Kill him! Okay, good. He's dead. And let me tell you, just knowing to, like, make a beeline for the Copper Knights makes all the difference with how easy or how difficult it is to get through this area. I really can't stress that truth enough. Because in my practice run, I struggled against these uh, Copper Knights. You know, I, I had to use a couple of uh, Cups of Wishes. But in this run, I'm just kind of breezing right through. Because they don't have many hit points. You're seeing that, that just uh, Hawkeye's level 1 tech pretty much by itself is taking them out. 
And that may just be because these enemies are essentially just beefed up versions of very early game enemies. I don't know. They do die very fast. It's good for us. Our stats are definitely getting capped out. Uh, doing my research on the classes, I did uh, re-remind myself that dexterity is broken in the SNES version of this game. I think I may have wasted a level up point in dexterity, but it's alright. I know what I need to do after the class change. I think I need to put one, either one or two points of dexterity on Hawkeye afterward and then I never have to touch it again. Anyway, we're actually at the end of the dungeon again, if you remember from way back at the beginning of the game when we first came in. The Mana Stone was just inside this room here sitting right here, but now, uh, shoot, yeah, now we can actually go on through. Look at that! There's a Benevidon up there! So we call flaming. And I guess we have to chase it halfway across the world? I'm actually glad it's nighttime. <laughs> in my practice run, from all the deaths I was taking and having to heal up from the uh, Copper Knights, it ended up being daytime by the time I got here. So this should go down even quicker, but, um... Vanguard is actually really easy. Uh, I know I said before that I thought Miss Palm was easier, but, uh... I'm going to retract that statement after doing a practice run of this. Uh, it's definitely... Dangard, that's the easiest. Definitely. There's not even a contest about it. He just can't really do anything. Anyway, we want to hit him hard with our gnome attacks, which Angela and Hawkeye both happen to have one. Uh, Kevin, we're just going to use Pressure Pointer with in melee what little we can in between spell casts, at least until MP runs out. I'm not going to restore MP unless for some reason I start taking a ton of damage and run out of healing MP with Kevin. But, um, and we'll use that Dirt Diversion, which also lowers its uh, evasion, I believe. So we shouldn't hardly ever miss. Yeah, we're just going to repeat this process until we run out of MP. Uh, Hawkeye should run out of MP before we actually defeat him. And uh, Angela should get really close. I don't know, it probably won't be as close since it's nighttime now. I fought him in the daytime on the practice run. So we should defeat him much quicker. Uh, this fight is actually kind of divided up into phases. Uh, there's four phases, actually. When you do enough damage, it moves to the next phase. Typical boss stuff. But uh, the first and third phase are basically this, where you get the overhead view of Flammy and... Uh, Dangar just kind of circles around you. And then the second and fourth phase is really not much difference. The only difference really is that you can get a side view of Flammy while Dangar still circles around. But yeah, that's really not all there is to say about this fight. Angela is actually not going to take a whole lot of damage from his attacks because she's resisting it for some reason. I think she's probably got some armor that resists it. Hawkeye will take somewhat heavy damage, but like he can take multiple hits in a row and still survive. So yeah, just easy all around. Definitely a good choice. For your final Benevidon. Dark Bene Benevidon notwithstanding, of course, since that is always the eighth only fight. Um, as usual, when I get hit with a multi-target attack, I just heal up with a Proto Oil from Angela. Hopefully I won't have to use too many of them, but it's not like they're in short supply. Keep 
pain coming. He's not going to attack much as long as you're spamming your spells like this. I think even when you're not spamming spells, he really doesn't actually attack a whole lot. He just kind of circles a lot, occasionally attacking. One thing I, to keep in mind, though, is if he's at the very bottom of the screen, you won't be able to target him with spells. And there we are, we're on phase two. Make sure to recast Pressure Pointer at the beginning of each phase. I don't know if it removes it, but, you know, better safe than sorry. You do actually leave battle, technically. Just put your weapons up and untransform and whatnot. Probably should have transformed before casting it, but I don't think the transformation will uh, actually remove it. Uh, when he screeches like that, I believe he's using a physical attack. Yeah, he hit Hawkeye, did about 150. Nothing that a healing light won't fix. So this is the basic strategy I'm using with this team, just spam spells with Hawkeye and Angela, and in the short time frame between selecting spells and them going off, use Kevin to actually do some melee damage. It actually adds up quite a bit to get that melee damage in between. I probably could have pulled that off on some of the earlier Benevidons that I just wasn't using Kevin for. Because I was being a dumb. Gotta love being a dumb, right? Guys, don't be a dumb. Use your melee attacks. I do like Dangard's uh, battle theme here. It's very worthy of a wind benevolent. I ran out of MP in my practice run at the third phase. But he might actually make it into the fourth phase this time before he runs out. I actually don't think it's uh, spellcasting bugs that allows you to get so many attacks in for every attack of his this time around. Uh, I think it's just his AI. He seems to alternate between attacking and just circling the party. So he just, in general, doesn't attack much. I guess it's... It must be clear that this is intended to be the first one you go after, but, I mean, when they get progressively stronger, why would you save the easiest one, f or why would you do the easiest one first, right? I mean, that's just common sense there. That is his ultimate attack there, as far as I'm aware. I didn't see him use any other attacks during my practice run. I definitely want to throw a Poto Oil down after that because it does pretty hefty damage, but he doesn't use it very often. And uh, Poto Oil, we go right back to Pummeling. I like to use the level 1 tech with Kevin because uh, you get multiple hits in. Do a lot more damage. I think you just got a melee attack off on someone. Looks like it may have been Kevin. Or maybe that was the melee attack. Still not seeing anybody having taken damage.
Oh yeah, he did attack Kevin. And he took zero damage. I think. Kevin's pretty resistant to an attacks as well. It's really just Hawkeye that's vulnerable to really anything besides the uh, the rare screen attack that he has. Going into the third phase. It's still nighttime, so I'm still going to take advantage of that. Throw a pressure pointer again. Boost our attack. And then let the spell spam commence once more. Um, I believe with the third phase, he does start to use screen attacks more often. Uh, the first two phases, he kind of relies on the single target attacks. And we may start seeing thunder, I believe. I probably should heal up Angela. right back on the offensive. This fight is very straightforward. Oh, looks like Hawkeye did run out of MP in the third phase again. Ah, well. This is where we get to do a little bit more melee, which is fine by me, because I do regret picking Angela. There's just too much screen freeze by casting spells and she does nothing with her melee attack. Oh, I probably need to heal Hawkeye now. That is one thing to keep in mind, is it's actually quite difficult to see his melee attacks. You just kind of got to pay attention to your health. And make sure you heal up when necessary. Angela got hit. But it doesn't do much damage to her. Luckily, Hawkeye's melee attacks are actually doing damage here, unlike at what's the Chartman Tower where he's doing like nothing. And we're already on the fourth phase. Just the damage is real here. Like the damage I'm doing, I mean. Vanguard ain't doing nothing. Although he did use a uh, screen attack right before that. Uh, right there he casts Accelerate. Uh, I believe that increases his dexterity, which does nothing. So, not a threat at all. Just more of the same. I guess the idea is he's supposed to be harder to hit and deal more critical hits, but uh, dexterity is broken and critical hits don't exist. Welcome to the bugginess that is Trials of Man from the SNES. And in the end, that, that's probably a lot to do with why this boss is so easy. It seems he relies on stats that are that are just they don't do anything. Someone got hit. Looks like he attacked Kevin. That's fine. Kevin resists it like a boss. Oh, 
One of these fights would be quicker if I didn't have a spellcasting character. This feels like so much time gets wasted with the screen freezing. Ugh. Can't wait to play the remake where it doesn't do this. The demo was too short, man! I need my fix! I think I've got like another month before it comes out. It was it April 27th or something? Pretty sure it's late April. And it might still get pushed back because of current events. I don't believe we've seen this screen attack before. It does about as much as the Thunderball does though, so... Definitely a good time to bust out a Poto Oro. I promise. I don't want to promise anything. I swear, I'm pretty sure this gets a lot better after the, the second class match. I start getting the better abilities. They're the ones that you don't really want to be spamming quite so much. Oh, jeez, I did not mean to heal Kevin. Whoops. Huh. Well, he's definitely close to dead. This game is almost out of MP. That's it. A very graceful death animation, but yeah, what you gonna do? You won! Only the Benevidon of Darkness is left, but we don't know where the Dark Stone is. Well, we can't leave the Benevidon alone, or it's just gonna get more powerful. But at this rate, my equipment isn't gonna make it. Didn't one of our merchant friends, Josephine, mention a place with good equipment? Peta, right? Shall we check it out? So I told you guys I would tell you when you can actually go to PETA, but I forgot that the game actually tells you to go there straight out. Eh. What you gotta do? This is indeed the earliest time that we can actually come to PETA. So... Just keep that in mind. I like to keep... Kevin on the AI when I'm running around because he, his AI is doing a better job of using techniques than Hawkeye's. Anyway, now we actually can come inside the building here and it's an end. I'm gonna go ahead and grow these seeds. Grow a projectile. because I don't really want them in my inventory. There are more seeds to farm. They're definitely not necessary. But they are a thing that exists. They start appearing after the second class change. Oh my, travelers, this late at night? It's practically morning. Pulling too many all-nighters is bad for your health. One night is 150 GP. Would you like to rest? Yes! Sleep well! And it is now Luna Day. A great day to fight Miss Palmat. By the way, I know I mentioned it a little bit before, but if you have trouble with any of these Benevidons, the best suggestion I can give you is to fight them on the day that is opposite their element. 
which won't help you against uh, Light Gazer, but if you got Kevin, you're probably wanting to fight at nighttime anyway. Anyway, here we are in PETA. It's actually here. And we got new equipment. Look at that, another 15 points of attack, but I can actually only afford one single thing. Yeah, we're gonna have to do a little bit of grinding. Unfortunately, um, I can't do a whole lot because I don't want to progress past level 38. And I can't do what I gotta do at level 38 off screen, so... What's the plan here? Well, I am going to buy Kevin's weapon because he definitely gets the most bang for my buck with melee weapons. I do believe this is the best equipment money can buy. And so this is kind of like the point of no return where once you get this stuff, money is going to be kind of pointless. Do with that information what you will. In the far north, in the sea west of Altina, is a dragon island. The dragon lord you've all heard about lives in the crystal desert, which covers half of the island. The dragon is scarily strong. He's smarter than humans, and that's not all. He even plans to level Peta to get rid of the stores of weapons and equipment. The jungle of visions to the west of Peta is so dense, it's like a maze. Careful, you don't get lost in there. There's a large castle deep in the jungle called Mirage Palace, but the foliage has gotten too thick to reach it lately. And I'm sure somebody here is going to tell me about the Dark Palace. There's a Man of Stone researcher here, you know. Have you seen him yet? I have not. It's definitely the dude that we need to check in with, though. What do we have over here? Oh, well, yes, I am a Man of Stone scholar. There were once eight Man of Stones, but with the Dark Stone lost, there are only seven. However, after exhaustive research, I have concluded that the Darkstone could be a night cavern north of Laurent on Light Castle Island. Light Castle, you say? Hmm. Not sure you've been there lately, pal. Oh, this is the same kid from before. This way. I'm worried the Dragon Lord will destroy the city. I feel it in my bones. I can barely get any sleep. These people knew they were gonna die. Okay, I already talked to this guy. Uh, I did see somebody down here. Yeah, I didn't talk to you before, did I? Dark Castle? Can't say I've heard of it. I have heard of a place called Light Castle, though. I think it's on a big island in the north of Warren. Okay. So here's the deal. These three locations that these villagers have mentioned, we're not going to go to all of them. Uh, they are actually the final dungeons that which one you go to depends on your main character. If your main character is Reese or Hawkeye, you're going to the Dark Castle. If your main character is Durin or Angela, you're going to the Crystal Desert. And if your main character is Kevin or Charlotte, you're going to Mirage Palace. You know it from that old prophecy of the prince who destroys his country. Why did I bring it up? Well, let's just say no one lives on that island anymore. And so if you haven't pieced it together yet, the reason the dark stone is moved, or is unknown, uh, uh, the reason the dark stone is um, 
lost is because the way the game handles it, it's going to show up in, like, a dungeon right before the final dungeon. The final dungeon is essentially a double dungeon. You're going to have, like, your cave or whatever that lets you get to that, the proper final dungeon, if that makes sense. And at the end of this cave, it's going to be your dark stone. So I guess it's kind of a clever way of saying that the Dark Stone could be in a different location on any given playthrough if you don't know how that works out. I say clever. It was clever back in 1995. Maybe not so much today. Okay, so that is actually all of PETA here explored. Now... If we actually go out into the jungle here... Oh wait! No, that's not all of it explored. Just, what am I doing? There's one place I did not actually go. And if I can get back over there... I get so lost in this city. It's like MC Escher stairs. This building, I forgot to go here. This stone tablet contains the goddess's prophecy about the world's end. You can't read it? Fine, I'll interpret the text for you. The world will fall to ruin, the tree will wither, the sword will be corrupted, and despair will reign in Mavalia's domain. But three heroes. The rest of the stone was broken off. I'm sure it further describes the world's destruction at the hand of the ruler of Mavolia. But we needn't worry yet. Besides, it has nothing to do with me. Why am I on Kevin again? I thought I switched to Hawkeye. Alright. With that, we can actually uh, go ahead and leave town now and... Oh, what's this? There's monsters here now! And they immediately attacked. Wow, they wasted no time at all. Anyway, they're a little bit higher level than the monsters in the best hall were. And they don't appear until you actually get to PETA proper, I believe. And there are enemies out here, plentiful amounts of them. That can drop the question mark, question mark, question mark seeds. So if you are lacking them and need to grind up, no better place. No better place. Okay, I can't raise strength and I actually can't raise dexterity. I believe 18 is the max. Um, so we're just going to keep raising stamina. Wow, who is dying already? Anyway, um, let's see how much experience these enemies actually get. Oh, hey, there's a treasure chest. And there you go. Question mark, question mark, question mark seed right off the bat. Great demonstration. Thank you, game. That was very helpful. I don't need these items, of course, anymore. Although, uh, I do believe they can actually be used in battle to do various things. I think mostly they do damage, but they might do status effects or something. Uh... Let's take a look at something here. Where is my experience totals? I am so not used to navigating this screen. Okay, here we go. Hawkeye has currently 18,530 to the next level. So let's just see how much experience we get here. Uh, this is a Papapoto, isn't it? Parpoto. Sorry, that's their their new name, Harpoto. We'll clear this area out and see how much experience I get. I'll give you an idea how quickly the grinding will go here. Well, actually, I forgot it tells you how much
how much experience you get every time you kill an enemy. So 685, that's that's quite a bit more than we were actually getting on the enemies in the gust hall. That was now that's more like what we're getting in the gust hall. 548. Yeah. I mean that was about a thousand experience and I'm like 17,000 away from the next level. And I just gained a level on Hawkeye. So it'll go fairly fast here. Fairly fast indeed. Oh, but I did not look at the money gain. That's one thing that you don't see on screen. So we got 5,024. Let's uh, go to the next screen. Kill something there. Adversary! That's a nice name. really hurt. I don't know who's getting punched. Oh, it was Hawkeye again. Go figure. Angela needs to be healed as well. Dang, that is nice experience. Alright, that was all the enemies in the area. So, what is our experience total looking like now? Or money. Not great money here. Um, I may do some research and see if there's a better place to grind for money. But, uh, I am going to end things off here. I'm going to do a little bit of grinding in between to get to level 38. Then next time we're gonna start out with our second class change. Yay! Thank you guys for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please consider hitting that sub button and smash that like button. It helps me out a lot. That's it for me. Peace out.